I'd like to use as a sermonic theme today, wherever you go, wherever you go. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for gathering us in this space. We thank you for the opportunity to be a community, some still online, but some gathered physically. We thank you for the opportunity to greet one another and to share peace and to sing songs and be reminded of who we are. Continue to open our ears and our hearts. Sometimes they close. Sometimes they find it easier to close in. But open us up in this moment, Lord, so that we might hear a word that something in our path may become visible, or that maybe you'll even take us off the path we feel we're on. Continue to lead and guide us and be with us always. In Jesus' name, amen. Lucas was a young kid in high school who dreamed of being a professional baseball player. He was a star athlete who was afforded some popularity at his high school. The guys would often hang out after games and they would have their own parties and invite whomever. He wasn't so much a party guy, but he loved hanging with his team members. He loved the team spirit of it all. And at one of these parties, he had a few more drinks than normal. He had a few more drinks than perhaps he should have had. And he found himself with a girl he barely knew. And he woke up the next morning with a hangover. He'd almost forgotten the incident, but a month later, this same girl comes to him with news that she is pregnant. Lucas wasn't ready to be a dad. He had been focusing on his career and being a professional baseball player. There's lots of other things he wanted to do before he became a dad. And yet here he is with a girl who says she wants to keep the baby. Well, Lucas battles inside and finally out of guilt, he feels like he should offer her marriage. And so out of that guilt, he offers to marry her. And that decision changes the rest of his life. This is where we enter the biblical text today. David was to be the next king. A whole lot of wars and backstabbing and killing and plotting and ambition are present in the lives of this community. Whoever said that each generation gets worse and worse obviously hadn't read First and Second Samuel. But here is David who has managed to survive and thrive and is living large in a beautiful home and has been set upon his throne by God. And it occurs to him, looking around at all this beauty, that after all that God has done for him, God's ark still has no home. And so out of guilt, David says, hey God, let me build you a home. Let us build you a nice palace. He felt guilty that he had this nice home and God's ark had no home yet. Let me upgrade you, God, to first class, but it came from a place of guilt. It sounds great to say that our decisions are based in a lot of prayers and discernment and consulting with God, but often our decisions in life are based on none of that. But the more honest truth is that making decisions often can be based on guilt or can be based on convenience, or based out of fear, or based on emotions and impulsivity, or based on jealousy, or a lack of sleep, or the food that we ate that is not agreeing with us. There are a lot of things that impact the way we make decisions, but oftentimes it has nothing to do with consulting and discerning God and asking God, what do you think? And so it's not only interesting to see why David offers to build God a house, but to see how God responds. You might expect God to take David up on the offer and say, yeah, it's about time you thought about building me a nice house, a nice pad. But God's response is sharp and attention grabbing. God says, ever since I got you all out of Egypt, I have gone where you went. Wherever you go, I go. When Pharaoh wouldn't let you go, I was there. When you crossed the Red Sea, I was there. When you were wandering and lost in the wilderness, I was there. When you were defeated by your enemy, I was there. When you got the news from the doctor, I was there. When you were faced with challenging news, I was there. When you fall, I am there. When your eyesight begins to fail you, I am there. When you didn't know how you were going to make it, I was there. 
when you fell into that depressive battle one more time, I was there. When you came out, I was there. When challenging times knock on your door, I will be there. When you least feel my presence, I, I am there. Wherever you go, guess what? I go. I don't need no house. All I ever wanted to be with is you, my people. What a gift to us that perhaps we sometimes forget or pales in the moment of the day. That's why it's so important for us to create quiet time, to get into the holy space and remember and be present to the still speaking presence voice of God. You know, I live on 55th Street, and I kid you not, sometimes the music is on blast and it's so loud, my house literally shakes. And it's really scary. We live in a loud world. And in Chicago, we live not only in a loud world, but we live in a violent world. I went south and I was talking to some guy and he asked me, where are you from? And I said, I'm from Chicago. And he said, what's it like living in Chicago? They're killing a lot of people up there. And this past week, two blocks away from where this church is, in the news, in the middle of a day, a 76-year-old man's carjack. He has a heart attack, and he dies. Listen to the news or listen to your life. All around us, stuff threatening to uproot us and take us out. And we have to create that quiet space to remind us and keep it ever before us that wherever you go, God is with you. Psalm 139 reads, where can I flee from God's presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limit of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness as, as light to you. Essentially, wherever you go, I go. God doesn't really need a house, but what God needs is people like you and me. We hopefully learn that through COVID, it's nice to gather, it's ideal, it's important, but if we can't, and when we can't, wherever you go, God is there. We want a beautiful edifice, but we also know that wherever you go, God is there. I have observed, you know, being on travel, when groups travel together, there's this notion of wherever you go, I go, is a prominent theme. You will see families who have bought the same t-shirt for every person in their group. You know they're traveling together because they all are wearing the same jacked up t-shirt. Or maybe it's a bracelet on the hand that lets everyone know that this group is together. And then when they arrive at their destination point, they give out orders and they count off, how many people do we have? We have 25 people. And they keep rosters and every time they gather together, they make sure that they have all 25 people that got off the van with them. And then when they decide to wander out, they break into groups. And whatever the group you get put in, that's your group for the allotted time. And wherever you go, and so when someone has to go to the bathroom, wherever you go, and so when someone wants to look in the gift shop, wherever you go, and when someone needs water, wherever you go, and if someone needs first aid, wherever you go, someone <laughs> wants to do anything wherever you go they go wherever we go god goes and whenever we go wherever you go i go this is the gift of our faith and sometimes i think we forget it yesterday a few of us and a few good boy scouts gathered to work on our lawn as part of a neighborhood grant we received phase one when I first met with the grant folks, because they require a monthly check-in, they want to know how their money is getting handled, they said, before we do any modification, let's just get rid of the weeds, prune the trees, and turn over the soil. And that's what we did yesterday. Did any of you see our lawn walking up? Or Okay, okay. Well, look at it on your way out. It looks a little bit different. That's what a few of us did yesterday. And after we did that, the gift of trees and plants planted over years were now visible. These gifts were always there, but we couldn't see them for all of the other stuff present that was hiding them. 
We didn't add anything, but we simply took away all the distractions and all the unwanted stuff so that we could see what we already had. Our gardener in residence announced we have grass too and with a little bit more care of our lawn, it could look a lot better. Wherever you go, there I go, but sometimes it's hard to feel God's presence because of all the other stuff that's present in our lives. And with a little attention, clearing away, and quality time, we may realize that we already have wherever you go, I go. As you all know from my vacation this year, our family did something very different. We did a road trip and we saw a lot of majestic mountains. Oh my God, there's so much beauty in the South. We drove really high, so high that our ears were popping and there were times we were on the side of cliffs and we could peek over and see the bottomless pit and for hours upon hours just beauty that astounded me, calmed me, centered me and put me in awe of God's creation. It wasn't new stuff and it had been there, but I had never seen it. And had there been no COVID, I probably would have got on a plane and got far away, but I was forced to drive and look around and see God's beauty. You see, the gift was always there. COVID has been a game changer, reminding us that wherever we are, whether we're in this building or whether we're at home or whether we're tuning in live on Facebook, wherever we are, God is with us. And ironically, I know that we are working on a new building, so this message is kind of ironic, but even as we're working on a new building, we can remember that wherever we go, God moves, and so do we. God is with us. Yesterday, while we were clearing away weed, turning over soil, and working together, this Baptist church pulled up in a van. The men and the boys were all in ties, and their women and girls were all in dresses, and they stood together right in front of our steps, and they sang. And then perhaps it was their pastor that shared one of these salvation messages about God loves and inviting people to give their life to Christ right in front of our church. I'm like, you want to do that? Do that in front of your church. They then went around and passed out leaflets and flyers to people that were passerbys in their corner Baptist church, and I remember them clearly because during part of COVID, they remained open. They live over in Woodlawn, but they were on our box passing out treats. And I noticed them because on weekdays, they have their girls out. Maybe it's a part of an economic homeschool class selling candy bars. But here it is that this church that is not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, standing on our lawn having church. They are proclaiming their truth to the world. And I confess it bothered me some. So many folks, entrepreneurs and Christians, see the gift of our space with weeds and bad lawn. They see a gold mine for selling their products and proclaiming their beliefs, and yet I wonder, do we see it? Because we come in and we go back home. If we really see that clearly right here God is with us, maybe we should sell some water. Maybe we should share hugs. Maybe we should share prayers. We should write big cardboards, free prayer, and stand on our lawn. Let's pray with people. Let's catch the vision that others already have, recognizing whenever we go, and especially right outside our doors, God is with us. It's not just a great place for others to gather, but maybe it's a great place for us to gather. We have a gift, and God is just as much present inside here as God is present outside there. Wherever you go, God goes too. People of faith, we gather together once a week, together. I mean, we do other meetings where we gather together different groups of people that are on different committees, but once a week, we call everybody to gather together. There are other opportunities to serve together and in the world, but this is the one time we are all invited to gather together to remind ourselves, to refresh ourselves, and to renew ourselves. We gather to offer thanks, we gather to sing, we gather to experience community, and we gather to remember our teaching. Just as Jesus gathered with the disciples and those who wanted to hear, we gather also. 
May you be reminded on this day as we gather that even when we leave, even after we feasted off of the word, even after we feasted off of being united and experienced community and encouraged songs and inspirational words wherever you find yourself this week, whatever news you find, whatever challenges face you, whatever spaces you occupy, that wherever you go this week, God goes to. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, there is a lot of noise and a lot of distractions, so remind us as people of God, as progressive people of God, that we have a testimony and that we have your presence, that it is always following us and it is always with us. And when we least feel it, just because we feel like it's not there doesn't mean that your presence is not with us. Wherever we go, you're there with us too. Amen.